Hi guys, it's Xenia. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to my perfume collection video. Today we are doing part three. I think this is gonna be your favorite if I can predict which video is gonna do the best. I think it's gonna be this one because we all love cheap and affordable perfumes and I feel like I've curated a really good collection of affordable perfumes that equally are affordable but smell expensive. I love those type of perfumes and I love discovering those types of perfumes and sharing them with you guys. So today I'm going to go over all of those type of perfumes that are in my collection, which is this entire second row right here. If you missed my part one and part two, which was all of my designers up here, go check those videos out. I will link both of those in the description box. But anyways, before we get into part three, please make sure that you are subscribed to my channel and turn your post notifications on and let's get started. I think I'm going to start off on this side. So I'm just going to grab and go. So first thing, as I've said in all these parts, I have to keep reiterating because I don't know if I have new people watching these videos, but I'm not going to be going over notes in this video because... It's just too many to go over notes. I have talked about all of these perfumes in depth in my previous videos, so you can go and watch those if you're interested in any of them specifically. So first perfume I have, this is Laura Mercier Ombre Vanille. I picked this up at TJ Maxx for like 20 bucks, and I know a lot of people have been trying to find this one because I know it's been discontinued. And it's this a really nice one. It kind of has this gourmand vibe to it. It's very sweet. And to me, it smells very similar to Sol de Janeiro um, Cherosa 62. It reminds me a lot of it because it, it's like that pistachio caramel sort of scent. But I think the vanilla in here is a little bit more enhanced and it's a little bit creamier. So it kind of has a little bit more of a gourmand vibe than those do. Like although Sol and Cherosa 62 is more of like a summer scent, this one I feel like is a little bit thicker and more of like a winter scent. It's just a little bit more gourmand. I'm gonna talk about all three of these kind of interchangeably. So this is the Yes I Am uh, line by Cacherelle. So I have the original Yes I Am right here, the one with the red lips. Uh, this made me kind of fall in love with this line, so that's why I bought these other two. I actually have a backup of this. I don't have many backups of perfumes because I think that backups just end up going bad. But I have one of this because that's how much I love it. This is like a sexy, sweet fragrance. It's like one of the best cheapies in the world. If you love sweeter fragrances, sexy, sweet fragrances, that's this perfume. There's like milk notes in it, so it has like this creamy vibe. So good. This one with the purple lipstick is called Yes I Am Fabulous. And this is basically like the original Yes I Am. It kind of has the same creamy milky DNA, but this one has some like berry notes in it, hence why it's purple. And of course, considering I love any perfume with berries in it, automatically I love that. And then this is the most, I guess, different from all of them. This one is the most fresh. It's not as creamy. It's a little bit more like fruity floral, whereas the other ones are more like sweet, milky, creamy. This one doesn't really have that creamy element. It's still a nice fragrance. It's just like, it's my least favorite though, definitely from the other two. I prefer more like sweet, creamy fragrances to like fresher fragrances. I have to talk about my favorite perfume of all time, Stella McCartney Pop. I bought this big size of it. This is the 3.3 or 3.4. This is actually 3.3. This smells like Barbie dolls. I will say it till the end of time. It smells like pink Barbie plastic, like Barbie shoes, that type of scent. I am in love with this scent. Uh, it's one of my most complimented scents ever. It does amazing on my skin. It has tomato leaf in it, which sounds kind of weird. It doesn't smell like tomatoes, but it has like this earthy scent to it but it's also very sweet in a very easy to wear type of sweet way like you're not going to offend anybody with this fragrance and it's a type of fragrance that you could wear all year round no matter the season it just does well in all uh weather and then this is a flanker to it which i'm gonna be honest i don't love as much it still has a bit of the original dna in it but this one's a little bit more green and a little bit more fresh and I don't love super fresh fragrances. This is Stella McCartney Pop Bluebell, and it's called Bluebell because it has a Bluebell note in it. Yeah, so this has that like pink, plasticky, again, Barbie-like scent, especially when it dries down, it kind of becomes more of like the original, but in the opening of it, it's just a little bit more like 
fresh and <laughs> like a little bit more crisp and I guess a little bit more like white florally or just florally <clears throat> than the original is. I don't really find the original that floral. Like for me, it's more of like a sweet, powdery, soft fragrance. Then I have a more and more by Cacharelle. This reminds me of Greece. I know I say that a lot of, about a lot of perfumes, but I have a lot of memories in Greece. Um, like some of my best memories in Greece because we used to, I'm Albanian, but we used to go to uh, Greece all the time, like on vacation. We have family there, so we used to always go there. And this, like, these are the type of perfumes that I would wear there because my cousins used to have these perfumes. And this one in particular is one of those scents that every Greek person used to wear. Like, if you walked by the streets of Greece, this is what everybody smelled like. I love this scent. It's kind of, like, woody. It's kind of sour. Like, it's a, like has this tanginess about it. I don't know how to explain it, though. I don't know. It's really good. Okay, Escada Candy Love, I believe this is called. This is like a creamy, sweet, but fruity fragrance. I think there's like strawberries or some type of berries in here. And I think there's a whipped cream note. So it's like fruity, but creamy. And it's so good. It's not like crazy sophisticated kind of has like a bit of like a body spray vibe to it because it's not so pungent but it mixes really well with a lot of other perfumes and a lot of body body sprays so that's why i love that scent next up vera wang princess i recently hauled this and i've fallen in love with this fragrance i've actually been wearing it a lot to bed because it's a really soft innocent um sweet fragrance but it's a very easy to wear sweet fragrance it's not sickly sweet it's just like soft and pretty and very princess like like this is what i would imagine a disney princess to wear it has like this vanilla vibe to it there's fruits in it very princess like and i love the bottle so pretty escada celebrate now this fragrance actually reminds me mm, it actually reminds me a lot of the type of fragrance that is in a more and more like i think these two could be dupes i love the fragrance that's in here because it reminds me of this and again it's this type of fragrance that i can't really explain it's like this soft woody feminine fragrance there's like um like petals in the back of this i don't necessarily find this floral but i don't know what i find this it's a very this is the type of scent where I can't really pinpoint a note in, so it's really hard for me to describe. Next up, I have Escada Miami Blossom. This straight up smells kind of like, I don't want to call it a pina colada because it's like an equal mixture of pineapple and coconut. And this doesn't really have coconut vibes into it. It's just a straight up like pineapple, fruity, tropical, like alcoholic beverage. Or just a tropical beverage, but that has a lot of uh, pineapple in it because it smells a lot like pineapple. It's very, like, tropical in that way. But it's not anything crazy. It doesn't really give off, like, perfumey vibes. It's more of, like, a body spray. And that's kind of what Escada scents tend to be like, in my opinion. This is definitely not supposed to be in this category, but it had snuck up in there. This was supposed to be my designers up there because this is by Lancome and this is Hypnos by Lancome, but I guess I'll include it in this one. Um, this smells like Uzo to me. If you know what Uzo is, then you already know. It's a very unique scent. I think there's like passion flower in this scent, which gives it like a really unique vibe. I don't have any perfume with that note in it. And it has vanilla in it. It's kind of creamy. Like I think the bottle and the juice in here kind of may suggest that this would be more of like a fresh scent. But it's not. Like believe it or not. It's more of like a dense vanilla. But it just has such a weird scent to it. Like very hard for me to explain. It's extremely unique. And it's quite polarizing. And can kind of come off a little mature at times. But it's pretty and it's extremely unique like you're gonna wear that you're not gonna smell like anybody else covergirl i know strange i never knew covergirl had perfumes i think i got it at cvs and i actually kind of like it it's not the most groundbreaking thing in the world and i don't remember at all what was in here but it reminds me do you guys remember when sonia kashuk used to have i think they had body sprays if any of you guys remember that point, <laughs> there was one of those body sprays smelled exactly like this perfume. I don't know how to describe this. Like, I really don't. It almost kind of gives me a vibe of my Stella McCartney pop. It doesn't smell similar, but it kind of, I don't know, there's something in it 
that reminds me of it slightly but it's good like it's kind of floral it's kind of fruity there's a like sweetness about it as well i wish i had the notes or i i don't even think i could find any information about this i don't even know what this is called <laughs> for me to tell you guys like i don't i don't even know if i find out what this is called i will write it on the screen but it's nice it's not groundbreaking but it's nice okay escada magnetism this is a sweet kind of green fragrance it's kind of like this zen vibe about it like i smell it and it kind of like puts me at ease i can't explain it's really good it has like this fret like sweetness with this equal like green almost like a herbal vibe to it it's a very unique scent for the house of escada because their scents are mostly like on the fruity side and they smell very like body spray this one doesn't smell like a body spray and i hear that this one gets tons of compliments i have two guest perfumes in there i have more guest perfumes you'll see but this is guest by marciano this is a winter fragrance this is very sweet i believe there's like caramel in here very sweet it's like sweet and powdery but it's really good and it smells more high-end than what it is you can find this for like 15 bucks at burlington and then of course do i even need to talk about this perfume uh a lot of you guys have bought this i feel like this is like my number one most recommended perfume to you guys that you guys have bought and that i get the most like positive feedback on well this as well as Stella McCartney Pop. You guys love this one as well. But this one I feel like is like my number one. This is Guest Seductive Noir. This is a dupe to Mongerlan by Guerlain. It's like this smooth, creamy, <coughs> can't speak. Smooth, creamy vetiver with vanilla in it. It's like a bit musky as well. It's very dark as the name suggests, Seductive Noir. And it's very sexy. And I like it way better than Mongerlan because Mongerlan has a really like pungent patchouli note and that one doesn't and then i have three banana republic fragrances so i have dark cherry and amber this one is basically baccarat rouge with the cherry note in it but that cherry note is not really it's very short-lived like you only get it in the opening for like the first five minutes and then it disappears and it just becomes baccarat rouge so that's dark cherry and amber peony and peppercorn is a really really nice one Kind of falls in the same category as Chanel Chance Eau Tendre. It's just like a soft, peony, pink, soft, feminine, floral scent. But it's really easy to like for somebody that doesn't like florals. And then this one is the most pungent of them all. This is a winter fragrance, for sure. This is tobacco and tonka bean. I don't really get much tobacco in here. Like, I don't really get any smoky vibe into it, which is good. I do get that tonka bean, and it's very creamy. It smells like argan oil. <laughs> if you guys ever used argan oil on your hair, it kind of smells like that. But this is really, 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 really thick and almost like musky, but very thick. Like you got to use this into, in the winter time. Okay, moving on to cubby number two. Um, let me start with these. I have a lot of my juicy couture fragrances in here. First off, this is like my, the fragrance that has been in my collection the longest. This is Juicy Couture, Gold Couture. Like, this is the fragrance that Jeremy Fragrance always talks about as being like the sexiest feminine perfume because it has a caramel note in it and it's really sweet and it's like that stereotypical thing where men just love sweet fragrances on women. That's basically what this one is. It's not anything crazy. It is a nice scent. You're going to get compliments. It's crowd pleasing. It's just not extremely like unique but it, it's good. And I do think that for a Juicy Couture fragrance, in my opinion, a lot of Juicy scents smell the same. This one doesn't, which is a good thing. My all-time favorite Juicy Couture fragrance, and this is like one of my fa favorite fragrance, like period. This is Juicy Couture Bodacious. This is another one that strays from that typical Juicy Couture DNA. It's way different. There's like coconut note in here. It's so sexy and delicious. Like this is a scent... I know I can wear, I will go out and everybody will be attracted to this scent because it's so good. It's like a creamy coconut, very pink smelling. And it's not a coconut that's annoying. It's a sexy, really delicious coconut. It has like a tropical vibe to it because of that coconut, but not in a sunscreen way. It's just like pretty and perfumey. Couture Couture has been around for a very long time. It's like one of the OG. Oh geez, but I think this smells really expensive. It reminds me a bit of the original Juicy Couture, 
not the Viva La Juicy, just the plain <laughs> Juicy Couture. It's like that type of DNA, but I really, really like this. And I get compliments on this like crazy, and my husband loves this scent. This one is very similar. This is Juicy Couture Hollywood Royal. There's actually marshmallow in this perfume, which is what initially attracted me to this. But that marshmallow is not really there. It's in the base note, so I was expecting it to come out a little bit more. And there is like a slight creamy element to it, but there's also vanilla in it, so it could just be that. Like, I'm not really getting that marshmallow in high quantities. Um, it kind of just smells like the original Juicy Couture. It's nothing crazy, but it's a nice scent, just like the original is. Okay, so it is actually the next day. I was super tired last night, and I had to just cut it off there because I had been filming like four videos in a row. So, we're getting back to it today. I wore the same shirt for the sake of it looking like one continuous video. But anyways, let's keep going. Let me do my pink sugar collection. So, I have three pink sugars. Obviously, I have the original pink sugar. This is like straight up burnt sugar, cotton candy, basically. That's all that it smells like. Then I have pink sugar berry blast. This is like a recent flanker that came out, I think, last year. This basically smells exactly like pink sugar, but with like a blueberry note. I actually wanted to show you guys this because I picked this up recently from uh, Bath & Body Works. This is blueberry sugar pancakes, and this used to be a online exclusive item, and now you can actually get it in store for the fall time and I picked it up, and this smells to me exactly like pink sugar berry blast. Like, it's just sugary cotton candy, but it's like blueberry cotton candy. And then this one is pink sugar red velvet. Pink sugar red velvet is basically pink sugar, but this has like a creamy note in the base. I can almost smell like this cakey type of note that just makes it a little bit more like um, dense, like a little bit more gourmand-like, rather than just pure burnt sugar like the original. So that's Red Velvet. Okay, this is Michael Kors uh, Sexy Blossom. Sexy Blossom is... It's not like astounding. It's one of those perfumes that like it just smells nice. It's like I think there's like some florals in here. It's just like a fresh floral fragrance. I'm sure there's some fruit in it. But yeah, I, I don't know. Sometimes it can kind of lean a little on the mature side for me, even though the bottle doesn't really look like it, but mm, I don't know about that one. <laughs> okay, Glossier You must be like my top most complimented perfume ever. Every single time I wear this perfume, I get a trillion and one compliments. This is like a musky perfume, but it's the best type of musky perfume ever. It's one of those perfumes that kind of like smells different on each person. And it's just phenomenal. Like I'm not somebody that typically likes just fresh and clean scents, but this one is so much more like it's kind of like woody, which I love. As I've said in all these videos, um, but yeah, I think there's Ambroxan in here, I believe, which just, you know, it ends up smelling different on each person and it's just, it does so well. It smells so good. This is something that you can wear to the gym easily and not offend anybody because it's one of those fragrances that mixes with sweat. You know, not many perfumes can do that because a lot of perfumes, when they mix with sweat, they just turn like bad musky. This one, it like almost becomes better when you're sweating. I can't explain it, but it's just how it is. It's a beautiful like spring, summer, any time of the year really fragrance, but definitely for spring and summer. Okay, this is Lacoste Eau Fresh. I think there's like some numbers attached to the name of this. I can't remember at the moment. Um, I'll write all the perfume names in the description box of this video. This perfume to me smells a lot like Versace's Bright Crystal, which is like an OG perfume. I personally never owned Bright Crystal, but my mom did and she wears it all the time. I really, really like this for a fresh perfume. It's kind of like a laid back, fresh, um, but pink smelling. Like there's a, a little tiny hint of sweetness in it that just kind of takes away from those florals. And it's just, yeah, it's a really like lovely pretty girl next door type of scent. I really actually really like this. Like I can smell it lingering in the air right now and it's really good. I already showed you guys this. This is my little one fluid ounce of my Stella McCartney Pop. This is the perfume that made me fall in love with Stella McCartney Pop. Let me actually put that over here. 
with the other pops. Okay, this is Soli Notes Vanille. You can get this at Target. They're basically like singular note perfumes and they're meant to just be mixed together so that you can create your own perfume. This one, obviously, there's not much more to say about it. It straight up just smells like vanilla, like literal vanilla extracts from your cupboard. It's just like true to just vanilla. If you like just a plain, plain vanilla, nothing added to it, that's this fragrance. This one I recently hauled. This is I Love Juicy Couture by Juicy Couture. This one is kind of like a musky perfume. This smells like a, a celebrity perfume. It actually smells pretty much exactly like Britney Spears Believe. It's kind of like this patchouli-like scent. It has like this muskiness to it. But then it also has that, you know, typical juicy DNA in it as well. I really like it. I think this actually smells way more expensive than it was. Um, I think I got it for like $20. It smells kind of like what a Gucci perfume uh, would smell like. I believe it actually is compared to, I think it's like Gucci by, by Gucci. It definitely smells a lot like it. This is like a cheapy that smells expensive type of perfume all the way. This is Roberto Cavalli. This is the original one. I know that he's had a lot of other ones. Oh, this smells so good. It's kind of like a spicy vanilla. It's a very unique scent. It smells extremely expensive. And actually, I have kind of duped this perfume. If you guys are familiar with Kayali's Deja Vu perfume, or you just want a cheaper alternative, I recently smelled that perfume at a Sephora. And the first thing that came to mind was actually this perfume, because funny enough, I was wearing it that day. And when I sprayed it on, I was confused because I was smelling this perfume. But turns out they actually smell very similar. So yeah, pick this one up. It's a really like high-end, mature, sexy vanilla. Um, and it's like kind of is spicy at the same time. I really, really love this. It's It just smells way more high-end and I think I got it for $15 at Marshalls. Okay. Speaking of perfumes that smell expensive, Hugo Boss Deep Red. This perfume is more like a fall-winter type of perfume. Um, it kind of reminds me of Hypnotic Poison by Dior. It's a little bit lighter than Hypnotic Poison, but it has like that strong, super, super, super sweet scent. But this one just kind of dries down a little bit more musky than Hypnotic Poison does. It's like it's not quite to the level of like thickness and des denseness that Hypnotic Poison is. It's just like a tad bit more like fresh, a tad bit more musky, but it's really, really good. It smells really sexy and like deep red. Deep red is a good name for it because it smells like the color red. Yeah. Another one that I absolutely love. I know I'm saying that for a lot of these perfumes, but clearly if they're in my collection, I love them. My Lolita Lampica. I love this perfume. This is another one of my husband's favorite perfumes. It reminds me of my childhood. This is like sweet, yummy, licorice. It's very like whimsical smelling and I've always mentioned that this perfume to me smells like what Tinkerbell would wear. Like it smells really princess-like to me and it's it's just so fun and whimsical. Like it just smells like a cartoon character. I love this perfume. It's so good and every time I, I wear it, I just feel hot. Like that that's what this perfume does for me. It's sweet more than anything but it's like licorice-y sweet. And it's like the best perfume ever. This is Hugo Boss, um, the scent. This was kind of like a mistake purchase for me because I meant to get the uh, the scent Private Accord, which I believe is a flanker. I think this is the original one. I meant to get that one and instead I got this because I didn't look at the bottle and by that time, once I purchased it, I couldn't return it because I bought it off of like a perfume kiosk randomly. But it was kind of a happy accident because I really like the way this smells, it's kind of like this peachy, like almost reminds me of like peach rings. It just smells really, really peachy and very like authentic. It's not synthetic at all. The only downside about this perfume is that it's one of like my least long lasting perfumes ever. Like it literally disappears in like five minutes. So I always have to either like over spray like crazy, put some like Vaseline so that this can kind of stick to it a little bit more, mix it up, uh, mix it with a body spray. I have to do some sort of tweaking to this perfume so I could get it to last for as long as possible. Otherwise it just disappears. All right, and then back here, um, this is actually empty. You'll see it 
uh, later on over there where my perfume oils are. I just keep this little oil perfumery uh, container, but we'll talk about those later. I just realized I actually forgot to talk about my Viva La Juicy uh, fragrances when I was talking about them yesterday. This is uh, Viva La Juicy Noir. This is a flanker to Viva La Juicy, but quite honestly, it smells exactly like Viva La Juicy. Like, there's not much more I can say to explain this fragrance because it smells exactly like Viva La Juicy. I don't know why it's a flanker. I literally smell no difference in it. Like, maybe like a slight bit of like darkness because it is called Noir, but really it's like 99.9% the same. So we can now move on to the second half of my perfume collection. So let's start off with this. This is Oscar de la Renta Bella Rosa. Bella Rosa to me is kind of similar to Victor and Ralph's Flower Bomb. Like if you're looking for a bit of a dupe, this is kind of it. They don't smell exactly the same. I think this one is not as sweet as Flower Bomb is. It's a tad bit more like fresh, but it smells really nice. Like I really, really love this. It's like a soft, almost tiny bit powdery, um, soft like pink florals but with sweetness so that is Bella Rosa this one was kind of like a recent pickup ish for me I bought this at a Saks off fifth and it was on clearance so I got it for like 20 bucks I, I don't remember exactly how much but it was very inexpensive this is a Deke and Voltaire girls can say anything and it literally looks like I don't know like a water bottle it kind of looks like medicine this one to me is really good it's just like a more vanilla perfume base than anything else like it's very sweet it kind of like puts me in the same headspace as girl of now by ellie saab like it kind of like there's sort of like a similarity between the two but it's this one's a bit more floral than girl of now but in a really like pretty sexy way like this is not as thick and sweet as Girl of Now, so I think this one, you could get away with wearing this during the spring and summer, um, even though it has sweetness in it because it's kind of balanced out by some pretty uh, light florals and just some like fresher notes, but I really, really love this. I think this one smells really hot and sexy. Okay, this is like probably one of my most inexpensive perfumes in my collection. It was literally $12.99. I still have the TJ Maxx sticker on it. This is English Laundry Oxford Blue Femme. This just smells like clean laundry, but it has like this bit of woodiness in it. And there's actually like a million notes of fruits in this perfume. Like there's so many fruits. You get like pineapple, some berries. It's really, really fruity and uplifting, especially when you first spray it out. Then it kind of gets like a clean musk and it becomes kind of like a clean, fresh out the shower, fresh out the laundry type of scent. Very much like a summer refreshing scent. So yeah, I love it. It's really, really, if you like fruity scents, fruity clean scents, this is a good one. Okay, this is my Victoria's Secret Bombshell Intense. Honestly, I don't really know why I keep this around because I'm actually not a big fan of the original Bombshell perfume. Um, I remember when I got this though, I loved it. Like when I smelled it at the store and once I got home, I was like, I don't know about that. I can't explain it. Like it definitely has a bit of the DNA of the original Bombshell in it, but... I guess intense is a good word for it. Like, it's a little bit more intense. It's more likable than the original Bombshell for me because I don't like the original. Um, like, there's something that is a little bit better in it, but I'm still not, like, totally in love with it. Okay, this is a heartbreaker type of perfume. Man killer, man eater, whatever you want to call it. This is Diesel Loverdose. And this, I believe, has, like, some chocolate notes. It's so creamy and sweet, indulgent, delicious. Literally, you become a snack when you wear this. It is, like, the better version of black opium in every possible way. The patchouli in it is not as strong. There's no coffee note. It's just, like, a creamy, sweet, sexy, going out, date night scent. I think the bottle kind of puts you in that mood automatically. But, yeah, it literally is a heartbreaker perfume. It smells out of this world. I have two mixed bar perfumes. So I have Whipped Almond. Whipped Almond is just like a creamy almond <laughs> scent. It smells very true to just like an almond scent. It's very creamy and it literally smells like almonds. <laughs> like it's a very simple scent. There's not like too much going on in it other than that almond. And then Vanilla Bourbon. I think this is like a well-loved, very popular one from theirs. 
and it literally just smells like vanilla bourbon. It's just like a boozy vanilla type of scent. It smells really good and it smells way more high end than what it is. It's like $20 and these are uh, like Target exclusive so you can only get them at Target. This is a recent pickup of mine that I showed in my recent haul. This is Delicious Cotton Candy. I purchased this off of Amazon. I will have it linked in my storefront if you're interested in purchasing this. It's literally like 18 bucks and it's basically kind of a dupe to pink sugar. I do think that the burnt sugar element in here is not as strong, which I actually really like because I don't really like how burnt <laughs> pink sugar sometimes smells on me. This one has like this tad bit more freshness to it, but it's still incredibly sweet and it still smells like cotton candy. So that is delicious cotton candy. It pretty much smells exactly like what the name is. This one was recommended to me so much and I finally purchased it. This is Signorina Misteriosa by Salvatore Ferragamo. This honestly smells like, where is it? My pink sugar berry blast. Like it kind of smells like sugary cotton candy, but blueberry. Like it kind of smells like that to me. And it also smells like that uh, blueberry sugar pancakes from Bath and Body Works. Like it just smells like blueberry sugar, like very sweet, but blueberry is very prominent in this perfume. The bottle is kind of misleading, I feel like, because it's like all black and you would think it'd be like mysterious. It's literally called Signorina Misteriosa, but it's not that mysterious. It's just like a pretty uplifting blueberry uh, sugary sweet scent. This is one of the best cheapies that smell expensive. Uh, this is Perry Ellis Orchid. This literally smells like a $150 perfume, like designer perfume straight up. I remember the first day I bought this, I wore it and I was with my best friend and she was non-stop complimenting me. Like everywhere we would go, she'd be like, dude, you smell so good. And I was wearing this perfume and number one, it lasts forever for an inexpensive perfume especially that's very impressive but this is like mm, it smells so good it kind of reminds me of like this lighter version of kelvin klein euphoria i can definitely smell a lot of berry notes in it hence this like purple bottle it's so berry like but it's not as intense as euphoria is i know euphoria can kind of rub people off the wrong way sometimes because of how strong that it is this is not, it's a little bit softer, but it still packs a punch in the best way possible. Like just delicious berry notes. It has like this vanilla vibe in it in the base. It's kind of like woody. It's kind of musky. It's so good and it smells so expensive. I found this at Burlington for $15, definitely no more than 20. It's so yeah. good. I have two Christian Siriano perfumes. I got introduced to this house because I saw this at Burlington, I believe. And this is the original silhouette. This is a very strong musky scent with a bit of sweetness in it. It's very intense. And I would definitely say more so of a winter fall type of fragrance because it definitely has like denseness to it, depth to it, I guess is a better word. Um, and it kind of has a hint of a cologne vibe in it. So it's one of those type of fragrances, but it's really sexy, like very mysterious and kind of dark. And then when I showed that perfume, a ton of you guys were recommending me to get Intimate Silhouette. Like literally so many of you guys were telling me, get Intimate, it smells so good. You're gonna get a million compliments. It's like one of my most complimented scents. Even when you looked up like reviews on Fragrantica, it had a lot of really positive reviews. So Intimate Silhouette in comparison to the original, it kind of has a vibe to it. It's like slightly a little bit more fresh and it kind of reminds me of Cloud by Ariana Grande slightly. Like it kind of has that vibe mixed into it. I guess Intimate Silhouette is kind of a good name for it because it does smell like a very intimate, sensual uh, scent. This perfume I've had in my collection since I started my collection. Like it's just always been in there because you know, it's a cheapie. So it was really affordable for me to get back in the day. And I still really like this. Obviously it's still in my collection. This is Pacifica Island Vanilla. It smells so good. It smells basically like a tropical vanilla. One thing about these is because they're more so like on the clean side of perfumes, they're not as chemically. They do go bad a lot faster than most perfumes do. Like I feel like the shelf life on these is like three to four months and I've had it for way more than that. And I can definitely smell that it's not 
up to par right now but it's a really pretty islandy tropical vanilla like if you like vanillas this is really good and i think they have a lot of really good perfumes uh pacifica and ever since this line like i feel like this was their original line of perfumes but ever since this they've come out with so many new really improved um perfumes there's actually one that smells exactly like baccarat rouge they do a lot of like really really nice perfumes i feel like next up i have oscar de la renta bella essence this is like a musky vanilla to me and it actually reminds me a lot of fancy love by jessica simpson like these two could be dupes it's just like a really really musky scent in a clean type of way mixed with like vanilla so it's like fresh musky clean with vanilla hey, this is such a beautiful perfume i fell in love with this the first time i ever smelled it this is kenneth cole white and it literally smells like the color white there's something so like innocent and clean about it and this actually is kind of mm, it smells so good there's like this sweet powderiness about it it kind of gives me a little bit of a vibe to my Stella McCartney pop, which I feel like is why I love this so much. They're not dupes, but it's giving me a vibe of it. And if you guys are familiar with Twilight Woods by Bath & Body Works, this is basically like the perfume version of Twilight Woods. So if you have that body spray and you have this, you pair them together and you're going to smell freaking amazing. The last two fragrances in here, I have my I Love Love by Moschino. This is kind of said to be a dupe for Dolce Gabbana Light Blue. In my opinion, this smells way better. It's more like cedar-like, like it's more woody and it's more zesty and bright and juicy. Like, I love this fragrance. It's more, it's more sexy to me and to me, um, light blue can kind of tend to be unisex. This one, I find it way more feminine than I find light blue. And then the last perfume in this little cubby is my MAC Turquatic. Love this. I'm on the last few drops of it. This smells like water. It smells like ocean, but there's so much more to it. Like it's not your basic fresh scent that just is aquatic like there's so much more to it I, there's like this deep woodiness about it and it smells super super expensive it's not that terribly expensive um i believe it's still like in mac stores and you can still buy it online i don't think it's discontinued so i'm gonna have to definitely get a backup or just a new bottle because i'm almost out of it but for this summertime right now this is like a perfect one and it's sexy like don't think of this as your typical a uh, fresh aquatic scent because it's so much more than that. Okay, so now let's move on to the last and final cubby with my um, affordable perfumes. I actually, this one is my affordable perfumes as well, so I'm going to be talking about this one. And I'm also going to be talking about my uh, collabs, like my dupe houses. I'm going to talk about those briefly at the end of this video. So this will probably be the longest parts of this entire video. At least that's what I'm guessing right now. I haven't sat down to edit all these videos, so I'm not sure which one's going to be the longest, but I feel like I have the most to talk about. So let's just get started. All right, first off, my Victoria's Secret Dream Angel. I really like this. It's not anything groundbreaking, but it's kind of like a fruity sweet scent. People say that this smells similar to Thank You Next by Ariana Grande. I don't really get that vibe. I guess because it's like sweet in similar ways, but it doesn't have like that pickle smell that Thank You Next does. And it's just like really wearable. It's really pretty. The only thing about it, it doesn't really last. And then speaking of Victoria's Secret, this is Scandalous. I love this perfume. I don't think it smells scandalous. I think there's like raspberry, praline, I think vanilla in it, like delicious sweet notes. And that's definitely exactly what comes through in it. It kind of has a vibe to Bath & Body Works Pink Chiffon. But if Pink Chiffon was like more grown up and perfumey and sexy, that's what it is. It's not too scandalous, but it's sexy. I have so two other MAC scents. I don't know why my MAC Turquatic ended up over here, but these are my other two MAC scents. I have Creme de Nude. This smells like burnt vanilla. Very sexy vanilla. Um, almost kind of has a vibe to Warm Vanilla Sugar by Bath & Body Works, but it's much better, like way sexier, and this is like what Warm Vanilla Sugar should have been. It smells really high-end, in my opinion. And then this is like one of my loves. This is MAC Candy Yum Yum. This basically smells like guava candy, like sugary. There's a cotton candy note in it. And this was actually the perfume that is a dupe to Floral Street Wonderland Peony. So if you have either one of these and you want the other, 
they both pretty much smell very similar to it. This one's a bit more floral. This one's a bit more candy-like, but they both give off basically the same vibe. So that's Matte Candy Yum Yum. Love it. It's definitely a yummy scent. And I love to wear that to bed a lot because I wake up smelling heavenly. Guess 1981 Indigo is... There's like red wine in here. There's grapes. It's very boozy and aquatic, which is such an odd mixture, but it makes for a very unique fragrance this is incredibly unique aquatic fresh but because of that boozy vibe it just has just a unique vibe about it it's kind of like woody and it's really good it's almost has like a powderiness about it i can't explain but it's one of like the most uh unique fresh perfumes that i have nina richie i think this is just the original one it looks like a little apple this kind of falls in the same category as my uh casherelle amor amor how i was saying that this one reminds me of greece because at one point everybody used to smell like that smell in greece and this is kind of similar to that smell i don't really know what is in here it's kind of like this tangy sexy musky scent with a bit of sweetness in it i can't really explain this but it smells so incredible to me because it just always reminds me of like vacation banana republic rosewood this it kind of has a vibe to lolita lempica but just without that licorice like it's it's very sweet kind of floral and this one's a bit more powdery than Lolita Olympica is and a little bit more fresh than Lolita Olympica is, but it kind of has a vibe to that in it. So that's Rosewood. CK Into You. This is another very inexpensive perfume that smells very expensive. This is a giant, like I think this is my biggest perfume bottle. It's five fluid ounces. Normally a full size of perfume is like 3.4. This is five. So, and it was really inexpensive. Like for five fluid ounces, I think I got this for like 30 bucks. This is, I believe it's compared to a very expensive perfume, either by Fragrance Du Bois or another brand, I'm not really sure. But it's kind of just like a sweet, citrusy, fresh scent. This is really well refined and everything in it is mixed really, really well. And it just has a really perfect balance of being like fresh and citrusy while also maintaining like this sweet creaminess in it as well. I think this smells super, super high end. It's not a very strong scent. It's kind of a, a softer scent, but this is definitely a perfect scent for this time of year. I have three more Calvin Klein perfumes. My Calvin Klein Euphoria. This will forever be one of my favorites. I, I'm so in love with this. It's like deep berries and the juice in it is purple. I always say Euphoria is the perfect name for it because when I smell it, it's euphoric. Like it truly smells so incredible. It's like deep berries mixed with musk in it and then this also has pomegranate which i think pomegranate is one of the sexiest most delicious perfume notes to exist so if you put a pomegranate into any perfume i'm like all over it and i love it it's just like deep delicious berries with like a, a sweet sort of musk kind of encompassing them. This is another recent favorite of mine. I love this perfume. I really want to get the big bottle of it. This is very not talked about. It's a highly underrated perfume. It's called Downtown by Kelvin Klein. And this I don't even know how to describe. The reviews on Fragrantica of this perfume were kind of negative because they were like, oh, this is a, a basic perfume, it's not good, whatever. Like, that was literally every review. And I feel like people just didn't give this a chance because when this first opens up, it's very peppery. Like, it straight up just almost smells like black pepper. But you have to give this time to settle on the skin. And once it is settled, then it just transforms into something so beautiful. This kind of sweetness kind of comes in and it's so good. Like, I straight up, I, I love this. I find it so incredibly good. And I get tons of compliments when I wear this. And then, of course, I've been talking about this a ton. Calvin Klein Women. This is the Eau de Parfum. This is basically the more feminine version of Dolce Gabbana Light Blue. But also, like, 12 times better. That's exactly how I can 
describe this. It's woody, it's citrusy. I think there's some broxin in here, if I'm not mistaken. Really good, like really, really, really good. It smells so much more expensive than it is. So those are all of my full-size bottles of perfumes. And now I actually have perfume oils. So I'm quickly just gonna go over what I have. I'm not really gonna explain too much. So I have my oil perfumery. Oil perfumery basically does dupes in oil perfume form for very high-end perfumes. So this one's a dupe for Aventus uh, for Her by Creed. I can't hold anything without dropping it. I think we know this by now. Um, this is Effing Fabulous by Tom Ford. I have Lost Cherry, which we all love, or I love. Love Don't Be Shy and Gucci Bloom. I have a whole video where I talked about oil perfumery. And then I have three oil perfumes by this brand called Kumba Made. I think you can find this brand at like Whole Foods. It's a very like clean fragrance brand. So I have Egyptian Musk. Hmm, smells good. I love wearing oil perfumes as kind of like a base and then I go over and it makes perfumes last really, really long. Then I have Persian Garden, which seems to be a favorite. Like people love this one. Some people say that they can't smell it like themselves, but people will compliment them with them. Like it's one of those like tricky scents, but it just like it garners a ton of compliments. And then of course I have Vanilla Bean, which I love because it just smells like Vanilla Bean. And then I actually have this. And this I got off of Amazon. I will have this linked in my storefront as well. This is the Pure Instinct Pheromone Oil. It's actually like a pheromone infused oil. And I actually love to put this under perfumes as well. And my husband goes crazy for this stuff. So maybe it actually works. And then, and then the last one, this one I remember like blew up on YouTube, on TikTok. Like people were loving this. And I found it at Ulta, I believe. This is the Nemat Vanilla Musk Fragrance Oil. I think you can still get it on Ulta. Mm, it still smells good. Like, it smells like warm vanilla cookies. All right, and then the last um, couple perfumes I'm going to talk about, I'm going to go through them really, really fast. I'm not going to even describe them in depth. So in this little cubby, I have a lot of perfume dupes. So I have all of these BU uh, perfumes. I actually have a whole video on BU fragrances. I will link it in the description if you're interested. But these all basically smell like dupes to other perfumes. So this one's called Golden Kiss and this kind of smells like J'adore by Dior. Trendy is one of my favorites. It doesn't smell like anything, but it smells like Grease. And I actually got these from Grease. Fairy Secret basically smells like Ariana Grande's Cloud. And Absolute Me kind of smells like Victor and Ralph's Flower Bomb. Or not Flower Bomb, Bomb Bomb. And then I have all my Zara fragrances. So first off, I have Tuberose Winter. And I also have Tuberose. These two, I always said that they kind of reminded me of Gucci Flora, which I showed in my previous videos. It's like this musky scent, but it's really, really sexy. And they honestly smell really similar, so I don't know why I got both. Wonder Rose is really good. Honestly, the names of a lot of these are so misleading because they smell nothing like what they're called. Like, this doesn't smell like rose. It just smells like a, a nice, sweet, fruity floral. It smells so, so, so good. It kind of gives me a vibe to Pink Chiffon. Crispy Gardenia. I believe this is a dupe to Black Opium. Yeah, Black Opium. <laughs> I think all of the Gardenia fragrances smell like Black Opium. They're all dupes to it. Violet Blossom. This one kind of reminds me of Hypnotic Poison in a way. Mmm, but I almost like this more. It's kind of muskier and a little bit more like, I don't know, it's just like darker. And this one, I feel like I could wear this at any time. It doesn't have to just be winter like Hypnotic Poison. Whoa, I almost dropped it. This one I think is a really famous one. This is just their Femme, which I also think smells like Hypnotic Poison. I think this one smells more like Hypnotic Poison than Violet Blossom. Does. And then the last two, I have apple juice. I have a giant bottle of this. Apple juice smells pretty much exactly like Chanel Chance Eau Tendre. So I don't know why I have both. I have to get rid of one of them. Um, but it smells exactly like Chanel Chance Eau Tendre. And, and then lastly, I have Nui. This one smells really nice. It's kind of like a syrupy, thick sweet fragrance more like a, a winter time fragrance all right and then these i'm definitely not going to go over because there's way too many to count 
But these are all of my perfume samples. Oh God. Um, I like having these just when I'm like reviewing perfumes to kind of like reference because I have some perfumes in here that I don't have full sizes of. I think I have Marc Jacobs Perfect in here as a little travel size. I have a bunch of my Juliana's perfumes sample size. Oh my God, they're all falling out. I need to get a bigger container for them because yeah. Oh, I have a You're the One um, little uh, spray. I have this Moschino like teddy bear um, just a bunch of random samples and just like travel size perfumes. Okay, and then the last part of this video, I'm actually going to film with my phone because I'm just going to quickly go over there and show you guys. So those are all of my collabs that I've done, my dupe house perfumes. Okay, so here's all my dupe house perfumes. And this little display thing, I actually got this from Target. I have all my Juliana's perfumes, so I'm not going to talk in depth too much about these. I have videos where i go in depth about all of them so i have in the mood this is a dupe to oud satin mood by mfk i have aurora which is baccarat rouge dupe scarlet letter head over heels is a dupe for killian rolling in love inner beauty exclusive is a dupe for delina exclusive bad B liquid gold is a dupe for mfk gentle fluidity and then aphrodite's rose is a dupe for atomic rose so those are all my Juliana's perfumes. And then like I said, I have all the little samples that they come with down here. Back here, I have my Okcha fragrances. I love these. Sweven is a dupe for Tom Ford's Lost Sherry. We have Sweet Addict, which is a dupe for uh, Love Don't Be Shy. And then uh, Sinful, or actually no, that's a dupe for Lost Cherry. Sweven, I believe, is a dupe for uh, Baccarat Rouge. And then I have my Be Layered fragrances. I have Gelato. This straight up smells like ice cream we have dolled up i think this is a dupe for like food bouquet or something like that i don't remember the name of it but it smells it's like the best perfume in the world it's so sexy and then here i have F me which is i think a original fragrance by them michael maloul nightfall this is a really really sexy fragrance it just smells like city lights and then all the way back there i have my little three scent bird fragrances and then i just keep some of like the packages that's my box for baccarat rouge because i don't want to throw that away all right so that is it for part three so there's only one more part left i think part four is gonna go by really easily because i only have these little three cubbies right here so that should kind of be a piece of cake to go through hopefully but anyways i hope you guys enjoyed part three let me know what you guys think and stay tuned for part four that is it for me today please subscribe to my channel and turn your post notifications on and stay tuned for part four